It was early September and autumn season begins. Kathy entered the university as freshman. Apart from her excitement, apprehension sets in as the breeze of autumn wrapped her entire body for she felt unsure if things will work out well for her. Being around her was Philip's security detail. How can she move freely? She felt stiff and uneasy. But then she has to act naturally, hoping that no one would notice them. They are good-looking men likely of the same age as hers and guised as college students, too. They are all over the place, watching, observing. Kathy preferred to be alone most of her time during breaks, browsing on her notes. And when she goes to the library, her security follows. They were around her all the time. Whenever she sits on the library table, her security would sit putting her between them. That way, no one can come near her. This has been a trying, ordinary routine as days and weeks pass, and this annoys her especially when some girls come to make friends with her. Kathy was totally annoyed and fed up that she came out of the library with exasperated expression on her face. She never thought that Philip's conditions was exasperating after all. In her thoughts, she was more than a prisoner always guarded and tailed wherever she goes. After a few months of enduring the presence of Philip's security, she decided of speaking to Philip how she felt. Kathy came upon him in the living room and voiced out her concerns. Could you please lessen the visibility of your men? They were all around me making me feel uncomfortable because my classmates noticed their presence and were asking why they were all around me. I couldn't give a better answer and their question was left hanging. You need to trust me, Philip. You want me to trust you? Then stick to my conditions. Look, if it weren't for my offer, you could have not. Stepped in that university, even if you were granted scholarship. I gave you that opportunity because it would be a waste if you let that talent of yours go down the drain. After that grant from the university, it is I who would sponsor your scholarship and you should be grateful for that. All you have to do is abide to my conditions, but here you are already complaining. Who do you think you are? A privileged maid wherein anything would be laid to you in a silver platter feeling entitled because Philip Warren, the wealthy businessman, your employer, was generous enough to help you? I am doing this because I am investing on you, Catherine Norton. Be grateful and humble to your employer rather than complaining. You agreed on my conditions, so stick to it. Don't challenge my expectations and my generosity. Kathy bowed her head sadly, feeling ashamed of herself. I am so sorry. This won't happen again and quietly left the living room. But when she entered her room, she gasped in surprise, for inside was a study table and a laptop, and when she went closer, beside the laptop was a cell phone. She had mixed feelings and was teary-eyed because this was unexpected, although within deep inside, how she wished she could have these gadgets to help her in her class activities. Kathy was so pleased and overjoyed over Philip's generosity about her needs that she felt so guilty for failing to abide to their agreement. She was so humbled by Philip's kindness and supportive spirit that she didn't know what to say. She came shyly to express her gratitude and said, I don't know the right words to express how I feel about your generous provision. But I am so grateful for knowing what I need, really. I never expected this kind of response to my secret wish to have and I am truly astounded. Just I have said, you're my scholar. I'm investing on you. So... It's but right to provide you whatever you need that may help you in your studies. Anyway, those are considered as a loan. And about the security, I also must protect you while you're in my care. It's for your safety and well-being. I want to feel assured that you're safe at all times, even if I'm not around. Kathy's cheerful expression shifted to wonderment, thinking how kind this man is, feeling so grateful and the more her admiration and fondness of Philip blooms in her heart. Kathy returned to her bedroom, and as she laid down on her bed, she dreamily looked at his face and smiled. In her mind and in her heart, her first impression on him when they met and accidentally stained his suit with an ice cream shifted from being rude and disrespectful to the kind, generous, and sensitive person he was now. But then, she felt sad about his words that came pounding repeatedly, I'm investing in you. She fret and somehow hurt. I'm but an investment to him, I guess he never sees me as a woman, but as a commodity, his property. I was sold to him, isn't it, Kathy? She sighed and felt some tears were about to fall on her pillow. Weeks and months pass, 
Kathy centered herself on her studies and her work as personal maid to Philip. And on her free time from school, she devoted her time to painting sceneries surrounding the Warren estate. She decided to keep herself busy to keep her mind off the sad realization that she was an investment and the returns must be profitable. One morning, while Kathy was doing her duties for Philip, she suddenly fainted and fell on the floor. Philip, who was conversing with her, heard a loud thud by his wardrobe closet just behind his bed. He was startled and called out her name, but Kathy was not responding, so he ran to her only to see Kathy on the floor unconscious. He panicked, immediately carried her to his bed. Soon the family doctor arrived as fetched by Philip's chauffeur and injected her to normalize her temperature. Meredith, the house governess, related that Kathy's fever could have been brought by her being busy on her studies and paintings. The doctor suspected that Kathy had overworked herself, which resulted to over-fatigue and over-stress, so she needed complete rest. We have to carry her back to her room then, Meredith said. No need. Let her rest here, Philip said. Meredith looked surprised, but then bowed and left Philip's room. Kathy felt Philip's presence near her and pretended to be still asleep. She felt his fingers running through her hair that her heart fluttered. She slowly opened her eyes and there was Philip gently staring at her. His radiating smile with his deep dimples thrilled her again. Kathy tried to rise up and said, I feel better now, Philip. Can I go? To my room now? Philip, with his brows furrowed, replied, Not. Yet. Just stay here and relax. I'm here to watch over you and see. To it that you're fully recovered. Don't ever tire and stress yourself. Again. You almost scared me to death when you fell unconscious. The sun is about to set down, thus nightfall begins. Kathy, feeling weak, fall to sleep again with a fluttering heart when Philip touched her forehead. A few hours later, when the lights surrounding the villa lit up, Kathy woke up and with renewed strength, she rose up and began walking to her bedroom. Where do you think you're going, young lady? Philip asked with a stern voice. 